to the, my name is Nick Chepso. His name is Patrasiris, and we're here to regale you and um, seduce you with uh, astrological lore and information. Is that not right? How you doing, Watson? Uh, seduce. That's an interesting word for today. <laughs> <laughs> not the one not I would use. Not in a sexual way. Not in a sexual way. I'm doing okay. Um, uh, I recently announced that I will not be taking any more uh, clients uh, for the next few months because of the project that I'm working on that requires my full attention. Um, so uh, that's a pretty big development. And uh, of course, uh, Nick is also involved in that project, but. I have to devote a bit more time uh, to it. And so I've taken this kind of big step um, of uh, working on that. And I can't give any further details about what exactly that is, but I promise it won't be too far from now when we yeah. can talk more the, about it. The time will come when we can talk about it. Uh, but for the time being, we cannot. And <laughs> but... <laughs> I thought, but I think it's at least a bit interesting, you know, for anyone out there kind of wondering, like, how, why is he doing this? Well, yeah, I promise <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll be worth it. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Uh, right. Uh, so I'm, I'm doing uh, okay. I'm a little, uh, oh, I guess another thing I should say is uh, thank you to everyone who came out yesterday to our watch party. Uh, we are, are Patreon supporters. They voted on the movie Fist of Fury. And yeah. so we watched that and we goofed around in the live chat uh, while uh, watching the film. And then we um, met up afterwards okay, on Zoom. Serious we had business. a really good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they discussed the astrology. Yeah. No, um, we, we, we enjoyed the Kung Fu movie. And then we got down to some serious astrologizing uh, in the, you know, the life of Bruce Lee and uh yeah um every person we talk about we you know we go there we go there for the astrology um it's not like patrick and i are massive kung fu heads i mean i i enjoy bruce lee's work um but the 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 thing was the you know his astrology was really fascinating i think we uncovered a lot of uh interesting things about the the man and and how the planets reflected uh his life and his ascension to fame and glory and and all that and so yeah um it was it was great fun and um an interesting way to kick off airy season wouldn't you say uh yeah for sure we didn't know exactly who was going to vote for what movie or how that would turn out but it kind of ended up with the most aries uh movie on the list um so uh those in future if you would like to be part of those um just make sure you're a cosmos tier subscriber on our patreon if you go to patreon and search the the astrology live stream and um and uh our watch parties are on the fourth saturday night of each month so um you, yeah go to our patreon for more information about that and just so you know that's a ton of fun so um today uh, was there anything you wanted to say, Nick? How are you doing? Oh yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, I mean, you and I, our lives are so entwined these days, right? Uh, in in every which way. Um, not just doing this astrology live stream, but y you and I are talking virtually every day. And um, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, apart from the fact that we're, you know, we have our own families and and lives outside astrology. Um, yeah, everything that's happening to you is also happening to me in its own way. It's true. I haven't uh, uh, totally closed my my books the way you have. Um, I'm going to be juggling my consultation career with uh, alongside the project that we're working on. Um, but at the same time, yeah, you know, what's what's going on for you is going on for me. So there's nothing much more to add to that. Um, OK, I, I see we're, we're getting some nice greetings from London and from the middle west ohio <laughs> um okay that that's that's the, the the peaceful middle part um the middle west um and uh yeah stephanie says greetings beautiful people okay well uh she must be talking about you my beautiful <laughs> friend. um so um all right uh today we're going to be talking about eclipses now next week's episode is going to be the full on april forecast month and i'm sure we'll wind up 
covering some of what we're talking about today again, uh, but there's never quite enough to say about eclipses, is there? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, it's the topic where if you scratch the itch just a little bit, um, you know, it all comes kind of pouring out and the story ends up being far bigger than you could ever actually tell in its entirety. Um, it's, it's the, it's the pattern that once you, you start uncovering a little bit of it, it kind of all starts <laughs> coming out. So it's one of the areas that I'm really interested in, in further researching in the future in a, in a more systematic way. Um, the effects of eclipses and the local uh, importance of certain eclipses. And um, that certainly seems to figure into some of the eclipse things we'll be discussing today. Now, um, while there's a lot of different things we could talk about with these eclipses, I think, you know, I think something that we kind of have to address with this eclipse that we can't really ignore is the fact that um, this upcoming solar eclipse and this upcoming lunar eclipse on March 25th tomorrow, we know that these there's often a way in which the eclipses of one season relate back to the, the developments that occurred at the previous set of solar and lunar eclipses. So those occurred at the end of, or rather in October. Um, we had a solar eclipse in Libra in October, and then I believe we had a lunar eclipse in Taurus, maybe at the very end of October or the very beginning of November. I can pull that up. Of 2023. Yep. And so obviously, you know, the major story that seems to have come out from that solar eclipse in Libra in October is its close coincidence with the um, attack uh, by Hamas. Uh, and the resulting escalation of violence um, in uh, in Palestine. And, you know, we kind of briefly addressed it at the time because we weren't really sure, you know, the situation was still sort of unfolding at the time. We haven't really touched it since. And, um, you know, I think um, for what it matters, <laughs> for, for, for however much anyone cares, you know, I think... Um, it's probably important to disclose a little bit about, you know, how I personally feel about this, just because I know that there's the situation has become so sort of inflamed that it's important to sort of know kind of where people stand on this. And I've kind of avoided being too explicit about this because I feel like one, I'm not so educated on this topic, but also, you know, <laughs> I think anyone can kind of read between the lines and, and see that like, you know, I can't be on the side of, you know, the, the human rights abusers and I, you know, can't condemn, I can't, you know, condone, you know, any of uh, this, this wanton violence and this over exaggerated sort of response against the Palestinian people in my view, for whatever it matters. And so that's kind of the point of view that I'm coming at this from, which is that, you know, I, I wish none of this was happening. And, um, uh, you know, I, <laughs> my, my sympathies, you know, are with the, oppressed and 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 that is my sort of view on it i don't know how much more um uh, into it i should get on that but i guess i should just feel like i just should preface with that because you know then everyone sort of knows more or less where i stand on this uh so in any I, case again again i can only say ditto i know i'm, I'm totally riding on the coattails of everything you say tonight <laughs> um, I, I, but, um, I, yeah, I can only just say the same. I, I, I stand with people period, you know, for me, it's just human beings period. There's room on the planet for everyone and everyone should be included in project humanity period. Right. So, so we know that, um, do you want to bring up the chart of the October 2023 yes. uh, solar eclipse? Let's do that. I was and, just... and also bring up uh, Netanyahu as well. Okay. So a bywheel of the, the, the solar eclipse, the one in yes. Libra, and, mm -hmm. and Netanyahu. Okay. Yeah. And... This is important to kind of start from here because it gives us a starting point to be able to talk about the developments that may occur as a result of this uh, this eclipse. 
Whoops. Um, so here's Netanyahu's um, chart. I'm not putting, we, it's a dirty data chart for him. So I'm not including the angles that are usually given uh, for his chart because we're, you know, there's a conflict with the birth time. Um, so I'm just using a, a solar sign chart with the sun in the first house. Uh, and ditto for the eclipse. The eclipse uh, occurred seven days before his birthday. I guess it's seven days before his 74th birthday, if I'm reading that correctly. Um, so yeah, um, he's 74 days minus a week. So as you can see, um, Netanyahu himself was born at a solar eclipse in Libra, in late Libra. And here we have another uh, solar eclipse that occurred in late Libra. Um, and this is on October 14th, which is just one week after the uh, the attack from Hamas and the essentially the beginning of the um, of Israel's uh, response to this. And this is, you know, what is, you know, continued now to the present day. Um, so given that the beginning, given, uh, given that the beginning of these sort of um, these hostilities seem to have coincided with that solar eclipse in Libra. We know then that there's going to be some kind of importance that this lunar eclipse in Libra and the solar eclipse in Aries in the opposite sign will kind of be the next major narrative development of this uh, conflict. Now, my hope obviously would be that, you know, it would be an end <laughs> to uh, all of this carnage, this violence. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think that that is going to be the case. Um, and the particular way that I was going to, the particular story, I guess, that really caught my attention actually was something that my mom told me a, a couple of weeks ago that it's kind of stuck with me ever since she talked about it. And uh, actually, it turns out um, that just a day or so ago, um, uh, an astrological colleague, um, Dan Waits uh, has published a, a video on YouTube covering this exact angle of um, this this conflict, and so it's a little confusing and it's a little strange. But uh, if you want to bring up the eclipse chart for the solar eclipse, for the one coming um, up, the yeah, one the coming one up. coming up, yeah. Um, so the solar eclipse on April eighth, yeah, hold on a second. of twenty twenty four. Uh, sorry, I got to put on my glasses. I see it. Okay. I've got a lot of eclipses standing by here. All right, there you are. So the thing that I think is really worth noticing about this is, um, so first a little context. Um, so <laughs> this is based on my sort of limited understanding of this. And actually, this has now been covered by CBS News. So uh, this isn't like some fringe thing now. I, this seems to be something which is entering kind of mainstream awareness. But I suppose, based on some of the statements by Hamas, uh, one of the reasons for the original October 2023 attack had to do with the transport of these cows to um to israel so the backstory on that <laughs> is that uh in the old testament or the torah uh there's this mention of a purification ritual ceremony which involves um uh, which involves slaughtering um burning. sacrificing burning burning, burning uh a, a, a red heifer but one that meets very specific conditions uh, has to be of a certain age. It, it it can't have been milked or or had a calf, and it has to be a perfect red heifer, meaning that there can't even be even like a couple of black hairs on it or something. This is extremely specific requirement for this uh, ceremony, and so the purpose of this. Uh, Apparently, uh, I'm doing a really bad job, I think, with explaining this. But essentially, the the reason that this really how do you vexed, do a good job of explaining this? <laughs> so the reason this is cause the reason this is causing a lot of anxiety for uh, for Muslims is because this ties into um, this belief amongst some Jewish extremists, and I might also add, 
evangelical Christians, especially in America, uh, that th that performing this uh, will allow the uh, temple on the mount to be rebuilt to replace the Al-Aqsa Mosque, the holiest uh, site in Islam, and uh, third, third, bring about this. It's the third holiest site in all of Islam, but the holiest oh. that that's in uh, um, the, the you know the the modern state of Israel slash Palestine. Yeah. So um, this, uh, where was I talking about this? Um, I'm sorry, I made I didn't notes. No, no, that's okay. Uh, so <laughs> I'm doing a really bad job explaining this. But the uh, so these cows. Um, essentially, people believe that this will allow the the new temple to be built on this spot, and that it would bring about the uh, the second coming of Christ. The, that this is the reason why a lot of evangelical Christian Americans uh, want this to happen because they see it as bringing about the second coming of Christ. Um, so, <laughs> this uh, obviously it's hard to understate how how awful this would be if this actually happened um because it would probably mean the well it would basically unite the islamic world uh you know we would there would be you know uh, muslims from you know indonesia to toronto you know would be likely extremely offended you know by uh this this uh, ritual taking place and the likely destruction of uh, the mosque that stands there. And so the reason this is so concerning is because uh, these these heifers were originally de uh, delivered in September of 2022. Um, the attacks occurred in October 2023, and those cows are now old enough that the ceremony could take place. And in fact, the, the, the Texan rancher who delivered the cows to Israel, um, he's planning on he was talking about how 2024 Passover would essentially be when this ritual would take place. And that is just like within one month of these eclipses that take place on this day. So I think what's important to note about this solar eclipse is that it's occurring at the same time when the ruler of that eclipse is going to be conjunct Saturn in Pisces. So we know that there is something about this eclipse which would be bringing about somehow <laughs> even worse uh, sort of manifestations of uh, the potentials of a Mars-Saturn conjunction like this. Um, the the hardening of, of wills and, and a greater commitment to, to destructive behavior but this is also happening at the same time as jupiter will be reading a uh, reaching a conjunction with the planet uranus now if jupiter is the principle of faith then jupiter conjoining uranus would be like faith on a kind of unbounded scale or a sort of miraculous development and this is interesting because it kind of tells us the two different sides of uh this potential story that for, for some people, they would see this as this kind of miraculous um, event of being able to perform this ceremony to bring about the second coming of Jesus. And on the other side, you know, seeing this you know, horrible uh, sacrilegious um, offense uh, you know, as represented by this mars Saturn conjunction in Pisces. And I kind of have been thinking about this for a while. Like, why do we have such a negative looking conjunction occurring at the same time as this more comparatively positive conjunction and i think the reason is, is that it's going to represent different things to different people and, and might i might i add this jupiter uranus conjunction is in taurus and taurus is more or less a cow <laughs> you know um, right uh <laughs> like yeah astrology is a bit too literal even for my liking um but yeah, yeah, I, mean, I don't, yeah, I don't like bull, look at but that. Bull is a male cow, you know, so like, not a heifer, admittedly, but nonetheless, right? Uh, we're it's, in that ballpark. Uh, it's the right yeah, and I should note, you know, that I think the number of people who actually want this to happen is very, very small. Yeah, um, <laughs> apparently, you know. apparently, a large 
section of the population of Israel does not want this to happen. So, well, obviously, like, yeah. why would you? I mean, this it literally yeah. insane. But you do have, uh, you do have Zealots. extremists Zealots. who, yeah. who do want this to happen, and you know, continually and flagrantly, you know, push the the barrier in as far as what they can get away with. Um, and so I just fear for the possibility of this eclipse to mean that there would be, if anything, an intensification of the current hostilities and to bring in uh, wider um, uh, anger, you know, uh, an even broader uh, base of, of uh, hostility uh, because of this potential attempt to do this sort of unprecedented kind of religious action that provokes this extremely aggrieved uh, response with this Mars Saturn conjunction. Um, now it's worth noting that the that Passover occur. I think it starts on like April twenty second, so it's like within the same kind of lunation cycle as uh, this eclipse. But it but the eclipse itself occurs, I believe, just one day before um, Ramadan ends. And so I, <laughs> I, I basically, I don't like the looks of this eclipse and knowing that there's this story in the background about uh, these, these cows and that we're sort of coming up to the time when this could potentially happen. Uh, it's really unthinkable. You know, you don't want to think about the, the potential consequences of that, but it also makes so much sense in that it's so almost kind of darkly hilarious that the solar eclipse happened, you know, it, those these two solar eclipses, October 2023 and April of 2024, crisscross over Texas, because that is like where these where uh, cows originated from. from. Now, um, let's, uh, let's take a look at the chart of the guy who is behind these cows because we thought that this was kind of a an interesting thing to look at yeah and um, you track down you track down his date of birth well done his name is byron stinson right yeah so he was born october 11th 1955 uh we don't have a place i assume okay. he was i'm gonna just use Houston, Texas. Texas yeah. Yeah. sure um I don't know if that's actually the place. Right. Um, but lo and behold. <laughs> lo and so, behold. So you'll notice that he was born with the sun at 17 Libra, which means that his son has been involved with this past eclipse in Libra and with the solar eclipse in the opposite place. And um, Another thing that I think is just kind of funny from the point of view of, of astrology is uh, I'm always <laughs> I'm always uh, uh, just impressed by how Mercury Neptune conjunctions seem to make sense for people who uh, struggle, you know, with reality. I've, I've seen, yeah. This guy has appeared at like um, uh, the National Prayer Breakfast. You know, he's been he's been making these presentations about the cows to. To members of Congress, you know, who are applauding this and think this is just great, um, and uh, you know, so that's that's disturbing on a whole other level. Um, that this like this person who believes that he's kind of on this like uh, religious mission, um, you know, has uh, such a uh, has potentially you know is filling this role of bringing about or facilitating. Um, this the you know the potential for this kind of horrendous development to occur um and speaking of <laughs> speaking of american evangelicals uh and lunar eclipses uh the current speaker of the house uh mike johnson uh he hold on, that. Hold on. he was born at a lunar eclipse and not Oops, unlike, no, not unlike another person we know. Sorry, I pulled up the wrong Mike Johnson. I pulled up the guy who was the bass player in Dinosaur Jr. for a little while. Um, this is the guy I'm looking for. Okay. Um, and I'll put him up on the by wheel as well. 
Uh, so yeah, you can see that um, Mike Johnson himself was born on the day of a lunar eclipse, uh, born with the sun in Aquarius opposite to the moon in Leo. You know that it's a lunar eclipse because the lunar eclipse occurs, you know, within 15 degrees or so of the nodes. That's how you know just from looking at the chart that it is a lunar eclipse as opposed to just a regular full moon. And we can see, and we also know that he uh, was made speaker on October 25th, 2023. So if you put up those transits for October 25th, 2023, you can see that that also occurs at a at a lunar eclipse, <laughs> well, just right, three right, days right. before right. the lunar eclipse in Taurus. Uh, if you want to uh, just bump the days ahead to the actual... I'll, I'll uh, put them up with the, with the lunar eclipse, just the chart of it. There we are. So, yeah, this was just three days. This uh, lunar eclipse in Taurus was just three days after uh, Mike Johnson became speaker. And uh, Mike Johnson being, you know, an evangelical Christian, um, you know, shares this extremely... Um, uh, <laughs> this view that's extremely partial, you know, to uh, doing things that will bring about the second coming of Christ. And uh, so we know that this next series of eclipses uh, will potentially involve him again, because we can also see that uh, that if you bring up the uh, April 8th, 2023 eclipse, that that will occur right across his Mars Uranus opposition. See, he has his Mars at 22 Aries with Uranus at 18 Libra, and that solar eclipse on April 8, 2024 takes place exactly opposite his Uranus and right on his Mars. So it tells us that this eclipse will also have the potential to kind of thrust <laughs> again, you know, the, uh, the issue of Mike Johnson, um, this person sort of back into uh this uh this sphere in the same way that the previous set of eclipses seem to bring him uh into consideration and into power uh, as the speaker of the house so i say all this to say i don't quite like the look of this solar eclipse in aries uh for uh ending things you know with yeah. <laughs> this topic if anything i i would think it would probably be the doubling down on or the intensification or worsening of and broadening of uh, the this conflict. And I hope that it doesn't happen. Uh, I hope that I'm wrong <laughs> in this case. Uh, so that's a little bit of what I have to say about that. Um, I wonder what people are seeing in the comments. I'm almost Shall afraid. Shall we have uh, a look see? Okay. Okay, so uh, Sarah on YouTube says, this is literal propaganda being spread from Hamas and the amount of extremism on the Muslim side is about a million times what's on the Jewish side. This whole thing is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to even, I didn't even want to talk about this in the first place. Uh, but um, I understand that, um, you know, uh, bringing this up is, I'm not saying that, uh, I, I mean, I, I, we did say that, like, obviously very, very few people actually support doing this. Uh, I just think the uh, potential consequences of it actually happening, you know, would obviously be disastrous. Uh, Sarah also says, also, none of this is new. Muslim no. extremists claim that Jewish people are trying to take back the mosque every 20-ish years or less. They aren't. Um, yeah, I mean, this is that that none of this is new except for the fact that five of these red heifers have been shipped from Texas to Israel. That's that's what that's what's new. Um, I mean, you know, Sarah is otherwise right. Um, and and until 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 those those cows arrived, um, it was fair to sort of treat this as a as a sort of fringe uh, uh, issue and something that was, you know, incredibly unlikely. Um, 
certainly any time I heard of it in the past, that's you know how it was uh, sort of brushed aside and and rightly so at the time. But you know, <laughs> uh, it's uh, more in the realm of possibility now because yeah, there are exactly. cows. That's now. The, yeah. it's, it, the, the the cows have come home, so to speak, or or have left <laughs> home. They've left home, um, and um, so yeah, I think I think for the, that's the only reason we're. Um, taking this seriously to the degree that we are um otherwise well and also because the astrological symbolism could reflect you know something like this happening um you know i think back on the last time saturn was in pisces um i don't think it was a conjunction but i think mars was in sagittarius square saturn in pisces when uh robin was assassinated um, oh, okay. I, I think I have Rabin's assassination here. Let me look. And we're kind of almost at the Saturn return of that event, I believe. Yeah. I don't know when. I don't know when we'll get to the exact um, Saturn return of that event. Um, yeah, it's November fourth, nineteen ninety-five. That's right. I, it was my first year of studying as an astrologer. Here, just a moment. I'll share the chart. So Reem says on YouTube. Sarah is not right. The government of Israel across decades has allowed Israel Israelis to access the Temple Mount area and has encouraged the rhetoric by religious fundamentalists to uh, reestablish the temple. Um, hmm. There we are. This was um, the shooting of Rabin. Um, yeah. November 4th, 1995 in Tel Aviv. Um, yeah, we are coming up to the Saturn return of that event. In fact, it was also preceded by a solar eclipse in Libra. Yeah. Um, if you, if you, uh, it would, it would have either happened very close to the beginning of Scorpio, like the last degrees of Libra. I can tell you right now. Um, yeah, at zero Scorpio, there was a solar eclipse at zero Scorpio where Mercury is on the 24th of October. Um, um, so this is, this is interesting too, because when Robin, uh, was assassinated, this is kind of what cleared the way in some ways for Netanyahu to, yes. he kind of lost his main opponent, you know, beyond that point. And so, um, uh, you know, the, you know, with Robin kind of disappeared the, the, the greatest prospect, you know, for being able to reach, um, a more peaceful sort of resolution. Uh, so I think that is really, that is kind of really something that this occurred, A, so close to this next series of eclipses that occurred in Libra and Aries, but also um, at kind of a, a, a an applying kind of Mars-Saturn alignment. And actually we have kind of a similar alignment to that this summer. Um, this summer we'll have Mars conjunct Jupiter and Gemini square mm. saturn pisces so we'll have sort of the opposite or inverse right. of that right. mars jupiter saturn square in fact would you like to compare yeah, the robin assassination with that mars jupiter yeah. conjunction this summer let's do that it happens to be happening on my birthday <laughs> oh really yeah pretty much much that's my solar return folks Wish oh wow up. so yeah, we can uh, see actually that's um, you can see how close that is to the exact uh, Saturn return of the assassination and also a kind of duplication yeah. of that Mars Jupiter square, but it's happening in the opposite direction, um, which has some interesting implications. We've also talked about this period before because this is also happening right around the time of the uh, DNC in the United States. That's um, right. And <laughs> I, 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 we know that the uh, this Israel-Palestine conflict has had a kind of larger impact in some ways on the Democratic side, as a lot of Democratic voters have um, felt kind of alienated by uh, Biden's, uh, you know, pro, uh, pro-Israel uh, sort of policy, even if he, even as he tries to kind of moderate it, or even as he tries to 
um, you know, kind of soften the blow of that or indicate how sort of frustrated he is with the situation, I still think there will probably be a large uh, contingent of people who do not feel uh, so great about the 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 kind of compromises that will have to be made in that time. Now, I'm not suggesting this would be another type of assassination, uh, but it may be similar in terms of the way it's a kind of politically realigning type of event. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I certainly, I mean, even just on the strength of, of when we were just talking about this August and this configuration in, in August relative to the DNC convention, um, we already thought, well, this is going to be, um, there's nothing else to call it. It's going to be a shit show, you know. Um, that's what it looks like to me. Excuse my French. Um, but but throw in, you know, and 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 obviously it's it's not hard to anticipate that um, things getting yet more complicated in the the Palestine crisis, uh, um, you know, could just undermine the Democratic Party even more. Uh, uh, so it's important to know too, I think that. You know that Mars Saturn square. That's the opening square, which means that whatever whatever happens around April eighth, kind of ends up reaching yeah its first stage of individuation. You know, as Mars makes this opening square from the point of the conjunction. So Mars, because any kind of conjunction represents both the ending of the previous cycle and the beginning of the new one. So the April eighth Mars Saturn conjunction um, ends up kind of uh, reaching it another stage of its development uh, yeah. in August of 2024. You can see how that Mars-Saturn conjunction begins in Pisces and then becomes that Mars-Saturn square by August. Now, uh, I thought, you know, Chris did an amazing job on the astrology podcast of showing how Mars-Saturn conjunctions and squares and oppositions seem to coincide with different waves and variants of COVID. You know, because mm. the Mars Saturn conjunction of early 2020 kind of made sense with the uh, with the lockdowns, and so the subsequent Mars Saturn interactions seem to happen around the time that new variants were identified. Obviously, Mars Saturn and diseases is like one of the um, potential uh, interpretations, but I would think that um, Mars Saturn can also make sense just for when, like lines are drawn in the sand <laughs> you know geopolitically and yeah. uh while these kind of are always ongoing you know these are also kind of contextual and so uh given all of this you know that makes me look at um uh april 8th as not just the solar eclipse beginning but also a major beginning for the mars saturn cycle and that that um, um you know involves mid-august indeed um, um, yeah, and it's, I mean, it, it's interesting going back to that, the, the 2020 and the Mars Saturn cycle. I mean, what, what made it, um, especially drawn out was at, at the end of 2020, we had this Mars, so the, the square to Saturn drawn out and had three hits and, and you know, took several months to, to, uh, uh, you know, move on. Um, so, you know, COVID being this, this, this situation that just, you know, went on and on and on and on and, and wore people out was, was, uh, you know, in part related to, um, how that Mars retrograde square Saturn, uh, uh, you know, drew, drew the whole thing on much longer than you would typically have. Um, this, this square in 2024 will come and go, but it's not the, you know, things can still be, things can still happen very quickly and, and uh, deteriorate really quickly. Um, yeah. In some ways I almost, I'm almost confused at why this didn't like, why this violence didn't start say during the Mars retrograde in Gemini of late 2022, because it was in September of 2022 that the, the heifers were delivered. Right. Um, uh, in fact, it was, I think it was September 15th, 2022. And we know that was Mars, that yeah, yeah. So Mars kind of entered, um, that pre retrograde shadow area, um, and obviously went retrograde through, um, through that winter. 
Right. So, so we can see Mars. Mars is kind of back. <laughs> so that so that's actually something interesting to note that 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 um April, August of 2024 will be the Mars return of when this event occurred, and um uh, yeah, it could reflect back on that uh, that initial event potentially. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah i, I, I mean <laughs> i'm speechless obviously i know i don't i don't like it you know <laughs> it's it's incredible uh, to be you know that anyone would just think that this is any of this is reasonable um well i mean this well the uh, well i mean we have uh, you know a lot of very powerful moneyed evangelical christian american interests you know backing this you know hardcore um and uh, you know some of these are familiar faces. Some of them are unfamiliar to me. Um, I have a list here of like uh, the top fifty, <laughs> you know, Christian uh, allies, and uh, you know it Im involves some of our old favorites like Pat Robertson and Mike Huckabee and uh, well, Mike Huckabee's Franklin born not Graham. Long, uh, Mike. Huckabee's born not long before Byron Stinson. Should I pull some of these people up? Uh, sure. Michelle Bachman, Tony Perkins, oh, yeah. you know, uh, Kenneth Copeland. These are pe the people who would, you know, welcome, you know, this this kind of thing. They're literally, you know, having presentations on this during the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. You know, it's not just... Uh, you know, I, and I think that is why, again, this is kind of different from these past times. It's like, well, now, you know, there's actually, um, this is sort of more in the air as a real possibility. Yeah, the, the thing we didn't, we, we've left out is it's not just that the five heifers have been delivered. Um, it's that they've, they have built this, <laughs> the, the, the construction um where which they're that you know the, these cows are going to be burned um so yeah the cows are there and they've also built whatever it is this ritualistic altar i suppose we're going to call it um i'm not sure if that's the correct terminology but for lack of of knowing what the right terminology would be we'll just call it that um so yeah i mean it's it's you know th these people are serious um or, or, you know, seriously unserious or unseriously serious. Um, uh, someone named Patrick on YouTube is asking, why am I blaming the Christians? Um, <laughs> well, uh, it's, not, it's not the, the Christians. Not it's, the it's, Christians. Well, it's more specifically ev evangelical, evangelical Christians who. A faction, a faction of American evangelical Christians, many of whom hold high political office in the United States. And have States. a lot of money and power and influence yeah. who yeah. want to bring about. I think the uh, the thing that really disturbs, disturbs me the most about that is for you know one one tenet of evangelical Christianity is the idea that you know the the second coming of Christ would be preceded by you know seven years of of uh, what they call tribulation, um, and that uh, they so, so there would be sort of an expectation that like things would get a lot worse before they would get better and it just so happens that we are you know on the door step of uranus going into gemini which for many reasons we expect will be a much more volatile period for the world overall and and uranus transits last roughly seven years in a sign so <laughs> we, like uh yeah they may bring, they may very well bring about end times just not the kind they may be banking on or uh the kind they're thinking of and at the end you know spoiler alert jesus doesn't come um yeah <laughs> so like, there's only death you know congratulations um so it, it's uh i mean yeah these are all the things that you don't really kind of want to see uh lining up like this and i can see i can see that the comments have uh predictably uh yeah turned into well uh people disputing um some of the assertions here and by other users so 
I mean, yeah, somewhat to be expected. I knew this is what happened. We are tackling a very, um, very tricky um, topic, and you know, this yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. Um, look, we we know we're we know we're talking about a very uh, small number of people. Uh, we know that, but that that's sort of beside the point. And you know, it's not a matter of blaming Jews or Christians or Muslims. It's very very specific individuals uh, who you know belong to uh, um, factions, uh, very specific factions within these larger groups. So. Um, we're by no means painting any of this with some kind of broad brush. We're, we're talking about very specific individuals. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I you know, can't emphasize enough how just uh, much I wish you know, this was happening. And, you know, my, my, uh, I think it's, you know, it's very easy, you know, to just kind of try to turn a blind eye to all of this, you know, but I think it's impossible. You know, it's, it's really, what's happening is truly horrible. Um, so we do know that there is going to be another solar eclipse in Libra in, I believe, October of 2024. And I think that's the last lunar eclipse or solar eclipse that occurs across this axis. Am I right? Um, I believe so. Let's, uh, let's pull that up. So I know there's a lunar eclipse in Pisces followed by a solar eclipse um, in October of 2024. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the autumn, we have the, the lunar eclipse at 25 Pisces and the, the solar eclipse at uh, 10. Oh, that oh, there will be another solar eclipse in March of 2025. So uh, that's a potent, that's potentially a, uh, a way then that we might see some of these developments continuing even through till the spring of 2025. Here, um, I'll, I'll pull these all up um, so we can look at them. Bear with me, and here we are. So yeah, this is the one in October, this coming October, the solar eclipse. Uh, yeah, so I was just saying that, um, well, and I was even noting that there will even be another solar eclipse in 2025 uh, as well. So we know that these these yes. events, these developments with these eclipses, they tend to kind of ping pong, um, you know, across uh, these eclipses. These, the eclipses end up being these sort of punctuating points of the nodes transit through uh, the the signs of Libra and Aries. And so um, potentially then that may not mean we'll see a resolution of these events until maybe they stop happening in this, um, in this, in this sign. Um, but uh, yeah, that was all I was going to. That's all I was going to bring up about that. Do you have a phone ringing? Yeah, um, let me deal with this just a moment. Uh, so I, I'm just, uh, looking at the, the comments here. So we have, uh, again, yeah, arguments coming through here. Yeah. I, I don't look, I don't, you guys got to stop arguing. If you're not one of the what? people who believe in this, then we're not talking about you and there's no need to be defensive. Okay. We're going to have you, a wait, are you reading <laughs> all this and it's like, you okay. Know, okay. It's, I mean, this really absurd back and forth. If you're not one of the people who believes in these red heifers and, and destroying the mosque and all this, then we're not talking about you. And there's no need for you to take this personally okay. or yeah. get defensive. 
and we're going to have a conversation uh, that's about this. And, you know, there's no need to blow up our comment section with a lot of yeah. back and forth. Period. All right. Uh, Trab, Trab says this holy cow thing is cocka crazy. I know it sounds crazy, yeah. right? No, um, it it's sounds crazy. crazy. But, it, but it's, but it's uh, the, but the, the cow thing, uh, it is real. <laughs> there yeah, are people, I mean, they're, they're the really hot cows. And this, yeah, this is the, this is the issue. Um, yeah, I, it, it does sound a bit wild, but, uh, you know, this is a, a real thing. And, uh, you know, something we should be aware of as we go into the time where, this this may be becoming a much more important thing and it's not just us saying this you know this is being covered in in cbs where i would consider that to be a somewhat uh mainstream news outlet it's not like you know completely made up or something yeah um so in any case uh you know the obviously while this i would think would be like the major uh story of these uh solar eclipses is there anything else we can kind of say about these solar eclipses just in general from the interpretation of them um because uh and it's tricky like it's not always consistent but sometimes i'll see like the the topics associated with the ruler of the sign where the eclipse happens and that sort of shows what what kind of people are potentially affected by it. So we know in general that solar eclipses are like um, supposed to be significant specifically for like leaders or people who are the heads of organizations. Um, and Aries, of course, is the sign where uh, the sun is exalted. So like really big uh, leaders, but it also of Aries is like the domains of like military or the military or like athletics or the, the sort of Aries domains, then I might think that this kind of solar eclipse could also be uh, a time when, say, you know, generals resign or when, uh, you know, a, a major sort of athletic figure, you know, reaches a huge accomplishment or retires or something like that. Um, what do you think of those? What do you kind of make of those types of interpretations of eclipses? <sighs> Yeah. Um, sorry, I was distracted reading comments. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, oh, I'm, um, I'm, I've, I've been unnerved by all this, and and I apologize if I'm. Um... Well, I told you, <laughs> I told you this is what will probably happen. Uh, oh, Beth yeah. uh, has shown up in the chat. Oh, I, I know, know her. her. Um, she says Texas secession was what I originally expected the eclipses to represent. That's and, the least of um... our worries. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, like... you know oh. that is kind of. I mean. It, it, I mean, it's fun. I mean, it's not funny, but uh, the fact that the heifers came from Texas is just kind of like a weird side note. But, you know, even if we are not focusing on the larger picture globally, if we're just focusing on the US, I mean, Texas is, is at the center of this standoff against the federal government over enforcement of uh, immigration uh, laws, uh, from their point of view, at least. And, you know, we, there was that letter that uh, the governor of Texas sent out that all these other governors like signed on to, and it sort of drew up the battle lines almost, you know, this country. And, oh, um, I totally forgot. Uh, there's this movie coming out starring Kirsten Dunst that depicts, it's called Civil War. All right, I'm gonna have oh. to share my I'm gonna have to share my screen for this. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get ready for this. Okay, um, <laughs> so I heard something me... about this. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna open this up so you can see. This is this um, is the Uranus and Gemini extravaganza, isn't it? So there's a movie called Civil War, um, with Kirsten Dunst, and it's about a civil war in the United States, and uh, Kirsten Dunst plays like a war reporter but she's like reporting like in her own country um and it's coming out on april 12th in the united states which is just four days after the solar eclipse in aries that occurs in texas and this almost borders on like irresponsible <laughs> like should we be encouraging this or, or is the point of this to maybe prevent it from happening you know to say look this is how awful it would be 
if the United States really did split apart and really did go to war with itself in this day and age. Like, let's not do that. <laughs> um, but it also makes you wonder if people would see this and, uh, you know, take notes. <laughs> um, but the fact that this is coming out just four days after the uh, solar eclipse in Aries and that it happens in Texas, where this is so, where it would, I mean, that's probably where I would guess that you know, the secession movement would, you know, take off or what have you. Um, that's pretty wild, right? <laughs> it's, um, yeah, <laughs> just to add, add to the spice. Um, you know, look, I've been talking about this, you know, uh, um, Uranus and Gemini thing and the, 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 the American Revolutionary War, the U.S. Civil War, the World War II, that that whole Uranus USA thing. I wrote a whole book about it, and I've talked about it numerous times, including on the astrology podcast and on our live stream. Um, but that's amongst astrologers and not out in the general public with you know all the all the flag wavers and uh, you know people who um, yeah who are really preoccupied with these kinds of ideas. So. Um, yeah, it seems like a really kooky thing to do. My understanding about this film, though, is that it's not, um, or maybe I'm thinking of, of some other Civil War thing, because when I'm reading this Wikipedia thing, it looks like it's contradicting the, the thing I read, because this, um, anyway, okay, uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, um, well, the yeah, I guess the idea of the film, I mean, what I assume... <laughs> The point is of releasing a film like this at this particular juncture is to prevent this from happening. Like maybe, maybe this is like the new Babylonian king substitute king ritual, you know, like <laughs> instead of actually having a giant civil war that like kills people, we'll just put it in a Hollywood film and that will like end up taking the kind of psychic brunt of the symbolism and these these things this will this will be the kind of uh you know voodoo doll that we can kind of project all of these you know fears onto and it can just sort of take the brunt of it and meanwhile you know we'll we'll stay uh safe uh here and um you know despite differences just managing to kind of deal with it for a while longer but uh you know given that you literally wrote the book on uranus and gemini and right. the us how likely do you think that is um that that it comes to that i mean uh, d d you know i don't think i needed you know when i wrote the book it was 2013 and it seemed like this really sort of far out uh, uh absurd idea uh you know the tea party was happening at the time and and whatnot but it was nothing like the world we live in today Today, um, I don't think you need to be an astrologer or to be following the Uranus cycle to acknowledge that um, all of this is well within the realm of possibility at this point. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's a different world. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't. It, I think, I think it's it's a conversation that that's sort of um, escaped from the astrological realm, and it's just it's it's you know, it's like these damn red cows. You know, it's like uh, something that should just be. Um, paranoid uh, um delusional you know um, um niche the paranoid uh, you know, and the delusional have niche. made their issues everyone else's problem um yeah yeah now now it's everyone's problem and and yeah thank you yeah no that's that's yeah, a good I mean, way to put it you know it blows um, it blows your mind it blows your mind that that anyone anyone sort of you know gets up in the morning day after day lives life on planet earth amongst other human beings and like this is what they're thinking about you know like like you know not not uh uh you know cleaning up the planet not making sure everyone's got enough to eat but this this is the important this thing. is the thing this, yeah. this is the thing that we really got to make happen and, like the Stinson guy is, is like went to this you know effort I, just the amount of effort it would take to do it's just yeah, it's wild. Um, I love uh, Beth's comment here. Not Beth Havens, who I guess is also called Beth. Um, I, I was just called her B Havens. But uh, Beth Watson said in response to my um, my wistful hope that 
you know, this uh, movie could like offset the <laughs> the uh, potential trajectory of the Uranus cycle. Uh, she says, "Oh, sweet summer child." So I, <laughs> I get the impression she uh, is saying I'm being a bit naive there, which you know, um, I'm not naive. I just still, you know, even against reason, you know, cling on to hope. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, there's any chance at all that uh, we don't live in a purely deterministic universe and that things can potentially be changed. Uh, you know, I don't want to give up that hope, but, you know, in practice, you know, I still act as though, you know, these things kind of in some sense have to happen in, uh, in the way that they will. Um, and one thing I've said about uh, Uranus in particular is that I feel like Uranus is a malefic in the moment and a benefic in hindsight, uh, because the experience of having your life disrupted and disheveled and having the status quo or a sort of baseline of stability, um, you know, uh, undone or, or up, upheaved, you know, that can be a very distressing experience. Uh, but the potential, you know, for, you know, this kind of wrecking crew, this wrecking ball of Uranus coming through your life is that it's sort of what would have had to have happened in order for you to reach a new equilibrium and that something better is potentially possible. So, you know, the prospect of a Uranus, of the Uranus return of the United States is scary because it's like people are kind of used to and attached to the idea of the kind of relative peace that Pax Americana since the end of World War II has brought, at least for people in the United States. And um, so, it, it, but it's hard to imagine that a better world, you know, is possible. We could have, you know, a government that is more responsive to its people and, you know, that we don't just have to be ruled by corrupt interests and that, you know, <laughs> we can do something about climate change and we can, you know, have health insurance for everyone and we can have a better standard of living. But I think we're just too, you know, it might be just the thing that we need, you know, even though it's will seem terrible in the moment that in hindsight, we may look back and think this is the only way we could have ever gotten out of this is for this kind of, you know, Uranian shitstorm <laughs> to have occurred. You know, this was the, the tornado that ended up putting our house in a uh, in a better spot. Yeah, yeah, but it probably means, you know, at the cost of some of us not making it to the other side. And it's just, you know, everyone gets one shot at a life on this planet. It's a miracle enough that, you know, any of us made it here and we get to go day through day by day. And to have something just absurd like this uh, um, thrown into the mix is, is, I mean, it's maddening, you know, and Astro Brain Fought says the title of today's podcast should be called Those Damn Red Cows. <laughs> and the people who who raised them. Yeah. Um, Beth says, I hope our AI overlord is nice. Yeah, um, right? I mean, that's... <laughs> that's a whole other... That's a whole other thing. Yeah, you yeah. know... Like, um, yeah <laughs> okay we have a third beth in the comments wow so we got a beth havens beth watson and a beth cummings we should um, have that, that welcome kiss song playing in the background you know beth, no? <laughs> yeah yeah you guys are the the very beth um so i'm nick dagan beth yeah <laughs> right right well the um, light bulb that's died on me here I was going to say, are you outside? <laughs> no, no, it's um, <laughs> never mind. I, Anna suggested I try this room stream today. And safe to say, but from oh. um, still experimenting here. Yeah, no, no worries. All right. Um, you can see me. B Haven says, I think Americans have been in a dark, self destructive spiral since 9 11. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that. Might I think be actually, tracks. actually, you know, the truth is, uh, I I would take it all the way back to the Kennedy assassination. Even like it's you know, um, just this gradual uh, um, unraveling of of um, 
people's belief in the, in in the country and the things that that uh, um, yeah, there there used to be certain standards that were were you know held on to and 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 believed in, and I think that's been corroding gradually over the decades since before literally even I was born, and I'm as old as dirt. So um, I think. Uh... 9-11, though, I think was uniquely important in the sort of church of the United States, though, because, like, the United States had just come off the victory in the Cold War, right? Like, you know, the, the Russian threat has been vanquished. You know, we're at the end of history. Um, and it's like, <laughs> that is, like, going to be the most flawed perspective on history possible. Like, you don't think there isn't a, an ending to this? Like, there, um, <laughs> there's... Uh, there's more to the story you know that the things that um uh i guess that americans sort of considered to be their strengths you know were actually like major liabilities in in the long term uh sorry i think i was i interrupted you though no no it's it's it, it's fine um uh, i'm the comments and um yeah, um, I I don't know. Uh, some people want to beat a dead cow. I think. Um, I, well, I was going to say, you know, a barbecue, a live one, barbecue, barbecue would be a better. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, Linda, you know, Linda Calder's, I think Linda we should Calder's saying Argentinian beef for Aberdeen Angus. Um, <laughs> we should, <laughs> we should have Metamorphin Power Rangers. Thanks, Beth. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, know, I think I, what I, would make more sense is if. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Beth. Um, um, yeah, I think, you know, if we take the cows and just had a cookout, you know, that would, and, and everyone's invited, you know, that would maybe be a, a if you're going to, you know, kill innocent cows, you know, then maybe for a purpose that everyone can, you know, enjoy. If I'm not, I know um, they're going to burn these well. cows. I don't know if they're going to kill them before they burn them. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if it matters. The riots. Yeah. Um, uh, Nicole says, I feel having a 24 hour news cycle has been our spiral. Um, yeah, that's an interesting. I mean, yeah. I think, yeah. um, I think this is one of the questions in the cards against humanity game. Like, you know, the <laughs> America's decline, you know, began officially with blank and then you can put in any, uh, any answer you want into, uh, the the end of that question. Um, okay, Astro Brain Fart says, all cows aside, <laughs> is there anything you can advise for the common folk on how to navigate these North Node, South Node, Libra, Aries, Eclipses? Do's oh, don'ts. that's thank you. <laughs> that's one of the best Astro Brain Farts I've ever heard. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of like to stop talking about red cows and, and you know, yeah. fanatical lunatics who... who um want to burn them and all this stuff um it's good enough enough with the crazy apocalypse uh wishes um yeah so one thing that i think astrologers seem to be kind of unsure about is like whether or not you should intentionally use an eclipse to do something or not um there's a long tradition of being so wary of eclipses that like they're always seen as like bad in every case and i'm not sh so sure about that you know i think obviously they they are weighty they have a great Grab significance but yeah. but i think you would want to use so if you are going to use an election to do something with an eclipse then i would think you would want to be very careful and I would also think you would want to make sure that the symbolism of the, the eclipse really matches what you're trying to do. So, for example, without giving any, you know, anonymous uh, personal information, you know, keeping this perfectly anonymous. Several years ago, um, I had a client who wanted me to uh, make an election for them to, for uh, leaving their country of origin and going to a new country to live. So to start their new life in that country. Well, that sounds like a pretty big event in someone's life to go from living in one country to live in a completely different country with a different culture and different language and everything. So the time frame they gave me just happened to have an eclipse. And it turns out that the length of the flight, you know, uh, would potentially allow them to 
take off before the eclipse and land after it was over. And I think that was what I recommended, um, was that they use the eclipse to intentionally tie the symbolism of the stop ending their life in one place and beginning their life in a new country with the eclipse and the, the, the end of that solar phase and the beginning of this new solar phase as the moon moved past it. And um, so I think when it's, when it's big enough like that, and you really are making like a definitive ending and beginning in your life that using a solar eclipse could make sense. What do you think about that? Nick? Yeah, um, the, the, that's absolutely right. I mean, it's, it's kind of like a portal. It's, it's a, you know, a, a, a period where you can, uh, you know, set set intentions and sort of follow through on them. Um, I think the the thing about this solar eclipse is it's a bit complicated by the Mercury retrograde that that runs through it. Um, I mean that that's you know part of the issue here is that there, there's so much. Um, while solar eclipses usually represent a sort of a fresh start, a new page in the chapter, uh, this one being coincident with a Mercury retrograde sort of pulls in a lot of old business with it. Um, this would not be a solar eclipse that I would use uh, to to relocate because you would find yourself relocating again at some future Mercury retrograde, whether it's the one in Virgo to Leo this summer or, or you know, any of the others that follow in the coming years. Um, oh, oh, so uh, the astrology podcast, our resident troll is back <laughs> saying, did you all do a victory lap yet for anticipating in the last live stream that the Venus Saturn conjunction would relate to an event with Kate Middleton? That was a great call. And then Astro Brain Fart says, that was my call, smiley face. But Nick was not convinced, though. Hashtag evil grin. And then B. Haven said at the Astrology Podcast, agreed. Great call. Um, I feel like we kind of did it by accident because we, <laughs> well, I said, we didn't know because I, I, people wanted to talk about Kate Middleton and I was like, Oh, let's not speculate. Let's but, then not. When we were, but then when we were talking about Venus Saturn, then I said, I said, well, maybe I should backtrack and, and say like, yeah, you're right. This does sound like you said something that made me. Think yeah. Okay, yeah well, let's, let's and well, and I, did, I walked it back and I said, and, and I stated something as such, but uh, I, I don't, I wouldn't want to do a victory lap. Over yeah. It. I don't know if I can really claim a full victory lap for that. No. I mean, I think the thing that kind of, led us to the fact that it could be about her is when we started when we were talking about how venus saturn conjunctions sometimes relate to like bad or hard things happening especially to women that and that even the sign that it happens in kind of describes the nature of what's going on um like we looked at that venus saturn that sun venus saturn conjunction in scorpio from 2014 where a bunch of women died at like this sterilization clinic um uh, so we we're talking about, well, what does Venus and Pisces mean? Well, Venus and Pisces is like, you know, uh, would be like women raised up to some high level, like in terms of their charm or popularity. Um, it would be like, a well, an exalted Venus would be like a, a princess or, you know, royalty, you know, and then we were like, wait a second. <laughs> right. <That laughs> you know? said, okay, yeah. You've got a point there. And then that was when I said, okay, maybe I walk that back and, and right. maybe it is worth talking about Kate Middleton for a minute, you know, even though we mm. were like, and so, we did, we did by accident make a call there, but, um, uh, she announced her so just for everyone watching she did announce that she had cancer and that video came out at the venus saturn conjunction so yeah. it was um you know yeah it was it, yeah well it, that was pretty good yeah i i'm you know despite being a leo sun and leo rising i didn't get into astrology to do victory laps <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, um, it's it's sort of like um you know, we we want to talk about astrology. Uh, we want to talk about what's happening now, what what's been happening in the past, and what might be coming around the corner. And now, that's what we do. and yeah. having said that, though, Nick, what do you consider some of your greatest calls, as it were? Oh, I don't know. I'm not taking stock. Have I? Have I? I don't know if I've <laughs> ever made a great call. Have I ever made a great call? <laughs> uh, well, no. I'm just wondering if, if off the top of your head, you you remember uh any great calls you've made um i'm sure i um, have i have not been taking stock. i haven't yeah me I, either. I, I i don't i don't uh well I don't okay actually i, I do I, have I, one i do have one i can remember that 
kind of, of blew yours my mind or of mine? Happened. No, of, of, of mine. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I guess I could take a victory lap. Um, Go ahead and take a victory lap. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I wrote this article a long time ago about Jupiter and Capricorn and how Jupiter and Capricorn seem to be these periods where you see greater mercy extended towards like prisons and prisoners. Um, so like the development of like the, the probation system occurred under Jupiter and Capricorn, a lot of um, uh, anti-death penalty activism took place during Jupiter and Capricorn periods. So when Jupiter was moving into Capricorn in 2020, I was like, well, it's conjunct Pluto. So I'm like, it should be like a movement for like, mass like liberation of of prisoners but i i didn't quite understand it at the time i couldn't i couldn't put it together i was i knew that okay well something good but bigger than that you know for for prisoners and so i didn't i didn't understand the context of this uh because it was you know obviously during covid but one of the consequences of covid was that they had to let a bunch of prisoners out i mean in certain countries there were like thousands and thousands of people right. who were jailed out of prison to prevent the spread of COVID. So I think that was a pretty good call. <laughs> um, you know, I, I didn't understand the exact reason for it. And the major call that I had made about uh, 2020 in general is the, the theme that I kept hopping on about was that Saturn and Capricorn was like about imprisonment and people staying where they are. And that it would, and that the Saturn Pluto conjunction would be like this atmosphere of like, fear and not wanting to like leave your place to imprison yourself i couldn't think of the word quarantine <laughs> i should have used the word quarantine, but i was thinking like it's about keeping yourself contained and away from others and um uh obviously that was you know that was true i did i did say the word diseases in that pre-2020 article i said this could be about diseases because that was what you know tarnus had linked to the saturn pluto conjunction uh cycle to so I I still get some points, I think, for right. for calling that, you know, I mean, I had a whole article on like surviving the 2020 Saturn Pluto conjunction, um, you know, this article that came out in 2019, uh, that kind of touched on all these things. And so um, I don't know how well that has aged, but I do, I do remember making, you know, content, uh, certain comments that, you know, could be construed as, you know, yeah, seeing what this is all about. I also appeared on the astrology podcast with uh, Chris and Austin to talk about Saturn and Capricorn, where I talked about a lot of these points, and um, that seems to have held up pretty well. So, uh, look, I'll say I'll this. take that. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll say this. I, you know, I, I know I've said things in the past that that came to be, but nothing comes to mind. Um, I think the the thing that's hanging over me right now. And the reason why I'm not really in the mood to make, you know, to take victory laps is uh, I know I'm going to be right about something I've said this coming November and I don't really, I'm not going to be celebrating. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm, right. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm not in the mood personally. It's not, yeah, it's not I mean, I an astrology racket it's, for it's, um, but even if, but, but Nick, you wouldn't, even if Trump, didn't win the election you would still you will you will still probably be correct overall about the uranus and gemini period being the time when the u.s sort of redefines itself oh, in a similar way sure. like it would even if those particulars are wrong we know that though the the overall I'm, trajectory I'm not particularly, is different. i'm not particularly in the mood to take a victory lap for that either you know, um, it's, right. it's, it's not in the, like, it, it's all kind of horrible. Uh, uh, all the stuff that I've, I've right. proposed that, that is likely to happen. Uh, none of it is, is desirable, uh, uh, for me or for anyone I know. And, uh, so yeah, it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm waving my bragging rights. I, you know, I, I yeah. it's not, it's not what this is about for me. Um, right. I want to talk about the fact that these, you know, these lights in the sky seem to be talking to us and we should get better at listening to them. And, you know, and that, that I propose that's a, a more sensible course of action than burning cattle, you know, or, or, or sorry to bring that up again. Um, but, you know, that that's, that's what this is about to me. Um, the lights in the sky seem to be talking to us. Let's try to pay attention. Um, right. On, on that point, Chris just mentions that, um, the, the, the Cape Middleton thing that, you know, he and I did in a, a, an episode on eclipses and the royal family was something that we covered 
quite extensively um, um, in that o on that episode. And so here we go. Um, the the Cape Middleton uh, re revelations uh, come up just as we're heading into eclipse season again. And yeah, the you know because of her uh, her uh, cancer treatment, she's likely to stay in um, in the news cycle. You know over in, you know over the coming months, and certainly it'll it'll be um, a big story in April as people are tracking her progress. Even though she asked everyone to leave her alone, of course no one will. Um, you know, well. Unlike the other royals, she she signed on for this, but uh, you know, nonetheless, uh, it's it's got to be a, a you know a rough thing to deal with, no matter who you are. You know, no one's rich enough to escape cancer. Um, so, um, right. Um, anyway, send it over. Um, JF says Nick, that could be about the ultimate martyrdom in November. Um, okay, all right. I don't know whose martyrdom. Hopefully, not mine. Uh, <laughs> when when everyone everyone well, comes after me for like, having well like because... I like I've said you know I think Trump will be president of his own country <laughs> he'll I still maintain that you're not wrong that he will be uh, president but it may not be of the United States of America right, right. Maybe yeah we, he's a Jefferson the, Davis yeah right yeah the, that he's the Jefferson Davis of some new sort of thing and yeah that that could be the case but I know I think I think he's going to win the election. That's that's it, you know. Trumptocracy, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, God, yeah. I'm still honestly. I'm still. I feel like I shouldn't have spoken about it so soon. Um, I really. I, I feel like I'm. Not, I, I haven't really. I've kind of gone back and forth, and I know we looked at this in depth, and I know like I was really startled by what I saw, but I'm still trying to um, make sense of it all with all of the different techniques that I use, and so. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to probably reserve issuing any sort of official product, uh, you know, prediction unless I'm really ready. One thing I've learned from 2016 is that, you know, it's okay to not make a prediction if you're not sure. And especially if you don't have good data. Um, yeah. That yeah. There's yeah. no shame in just declining, you know, to predict and um, uh, that we shouldn't feel like we have to. I think our most important job is to observe and document, you know, the, the prediction stuff is always speculation. No, how, no matter how sort of certain you feel, no matter how, uh, um, how much you're on your a game as an astrologer, the, the, the main gig here is to observe and document, um, you know, that that's what this is all about to me. The, the, the fact that I've made this or that prediction, uh, you know, is really secondary to me to, to compared to the, the main job, which is to um, try and make sense of this phenomenon, you know, um, with, with everything in the world that, that, um, that, you know, people value and believe in. Um, it, it just seems to me like this is really, you know, basic. Um, the lights in the sky are talking to us, like, let's pay attention. And, um, Try to get. Um, I was gonna. Um, yeah, Kate. Kate brought up uh, Dan Waite's video. Um, Kate, you you must have tuned in late because we we mentioned it already. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a, we were it's already a gonna talk about this. <laughs> he just happened to have released it right. Uh, yeah, right yeah, before yeah. We Patrick, were Patrick this, and so. I were already gonna cover this today, and then uh, Dan's video came out yesterday. It's very good. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, we're just, this is supplementary commentary, I suppose, to, to, um, to what was said there. Right. Um, I was just reading the comments. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I really love that, I, that we have, you know, I'm just very grateful that people are, uh, engaged <laughs> joining us at all <laughs> um so i'm i'm happy for everyone being here um well is there anything you want else to say about uh about the about this uh this lunar eclipse so um i guess we could probably try to f more fully answer like what people should do uh with eclipses i know for myself I guess one of the things I'd recommend is, um, I've talked about this before on this uh, on the live stream, but I just um, 
around eclipses, like especially when they're actually happening, I tend to have things occur that are a bit out of the ordinary, but that they usually involve animals. And if for whatever reason, it feels kind of omenistic. Um, sometimes mm. it's like dead animals that I come across or, or like in some ways, like a, an unusual encounter with like a wild animal. And uh, even when I stayed inside, <laughs> even when I stayed inside, you know, I, we, uh, Beth and I, you know, watched, uh, we watched the, the Jordan Peele movie, <laughs> Get Out, at the solar eclipse. We decided to watch this movie during the eclipse. And then there's this imagery of like this dead deer, you know, right at the beginning of the movie. And we're like, what the f <laughs> This is, can't get away from it. Like it, you know, it follows you. And so it, it's strange, you know, it, it's hard to say when you encounter something in your ordinary life, whether it's like a, whether it has a meaning or whether it's just a random chance event. But seemingly, I just noted, like, because I'm aware of when the eclipses are happening, I'm just more aware of these kind of weird encounters with nature and with wildlife. And, the, and it feels like that should be meaningful. So I guess my advice would be uh, to, to document even kind of small things that are happening around that time. I can't say that all of them necessarily important. There are just, I think, random things that can happen. But um, sometimes when you sort of are documenting what's happening around the actual time of an eclipse, literally in your immediate environment, that there can be odd connections that you can make then between those different eclipses. And, um, you know, I guess uh, it's almost like... Uh, I don't know, dream interpretation or omen interpretation or something uh, along those lines. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's that's one thing I could uh, recommend. Obviously, you want to look at how it falls in the chart, what house it's in. You know, if it's a yeah. solar eclipse, it's a major ending or beginning. I will find, I do think, though, that um, interpreting eclipses correctly in your own life it, it, it is tricky. Um, I feel like it's a lot more contextual. Like if there's, if you're talking to someone who like say the solar eclipse is happening in their seventh house, if they're in a relationship, then we know that that solar eclipse could be like a major stress test, you know, of that relationship and like major things happening with that person. But if, if you're not with anyone and an eclipse happens in that place, then you know, it, it, I guess it could signal that, you know, the eventual emergence, you know, of that, of that person who fills that role. And I've seen this now, even in a few uh, cases that in a time when someone had a solar eclipse occur in their seventh house, that they weren't in a relationship and they didn't get into a relationship that time, but they did meet the person mm. that they eventually would, you know, get with. It just like took a few years for them to realize that, oh, they're actually, you know, a romantic prospect. And so it, it sort of makes sense in the timeline then that like, well, the time they actually met their future spouse was, you know, at a solar eclipse in the seventh house, even though they didn't understand it at the time as such. So that's another kind of theme of, of uh, solar eclipses, wouldn't you say? Like uh, humble beginnings. Right. Um, Stephanie King asks, uh, thoughts on Chiron starring in the April 8th eclipse show? You know, um, funny enough, uh, we don't usually talk about Chiron here and I'm not really thinking about Chiron so much, but what it does, what, what it has just occurred to me, I'm going to put this up, uh, and bear with me. There's, there's someone that I, I do, one of the people I think of when I think of Chiron, um, there's like a small number of people that I actually associate with that and um just give me a second here all right um so it occurs to me there's an anniversary we're coming to talking about sort of the country coming apart um this eclipse is the is 56 years and four days after the murder of Dr. King. Um, here, I'm going to put Chiron in the mix since you you know we're we're looking at it. Um, 
All right. So yeah, when when Dr. King was murdered in 1968, Chiron had just made its ingress into Aries. So this is one of the reasons why I think of him if I think of Chiron at all. And he was murdered during a you know the week just just after there had been a solar eclipse um, in Aries, and and the sun was conjunct Saturn. And it does remind me of the eclipse that's coming up now because of course. Um, 56 years is a nodal return and a Venus return, um, a joint Venus and nodal synodic return. Um, so it's interesting. I mean, I, you know, I don't know where I'm going with this, but if I have anything to say about Chiron is, uh, uh insofar as it's in Aries for this eclipse period, and it was in an Aries, it was in Aries, uh, at the time of, um, King's murder. Um, is that, yeah, this, th there's a lot about 2024 that makes me think of 1968. Um, you know, until, at least in terms of the 20th century, 1968 was, was one of the craziest years of that century, even though neither of the world wars were fought during it. And, um, yeah, I, you know, I mean, these, these, it kind of speaks for itself. You can, you can see some, some hints of, uh, of, uh, of an echo when we're looking at um, this coming April. So and, wait a sec, wait a sec. That means that that's 68. Wait, so the solar eclipse then that occurred like one week before Martin Luther King Junior was assassinated would have been a solar eclipse in Aries in yes. rough proximity proximity to Chiron then. Yes. Yes. Wow. Okay. So this is interesting because like, remember, you know, I was saying that like a solar eclipse in Aries could be like the uh, you know, the uh well the uh could be relevant for like leaders, you know, in, in some respect generally, or like right. you know, singular figures or heroic figures even. So uh, the fact that that happened to uh, King in that time is uh, is really wild. Um, now, it's hard to say that without saying that, you know, I guess you'd have to say, well, something similar then could happen uh, during this one. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, again, I don't want to say anything that someone would suggest I should take a victory lap for later. Um, but I'm just saying that, you know, the minute you mention Chiron and a solar eclipse in Aries, this is what I think of. Um, I'm thinking right. a lot about 1968 in these days, you know, uh, in much the same way, we're going to get the, the, the blue three sun Venus conjunction in Gemini, um, later, you know, in a couple of months. And, and that was the conjunction that, that, uh, coincided with Bobby Kennedy's murder. Um, so yeah, um, I always, I, Chiron, Chiron makes me think of Martin Luther King. And then when it was discovered in 1977, it makes me think of Stephen Biko, who was murdered here in South Africa. Um, and, and there's, there's, you know, something about the, the, these, these, um, these campaigners for human rights who are martyred, um, um, at these times. And, um, yeah, I don't know who, who fits that bill right now. And I wouldn't dare speculate. And, you know, obviously, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we're, we're not in for another April, 1968 moment. Um, but yeah, um, that's one of the periods that this makes me think of no doubt about it. Well, I I'm going to say, it seems like Chiron is kind of malefic. <laughs> um, uh, it seems like it's a, it, it's like a painful, <laughs> uh, planet to, it, for us to be conjunct with or. Yeah, it's it. Well, it's, you know, it's a bridge um it, it bridges worlds and um there was something you know i mean when you think about the 1960s and all the things that happened in in what we call the, the civil rights movement um king's murder was like this point of no return you know it uh um I, you know there's still cities you know i, I think you can still walk through parts of washington dc or detroit or a lot of american cities and still see uh, the 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 remnants the rubble of of um, you know the 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 explosion of rage um, that that followed his murder and uh, you know those scars are still visible on 
on the landscape of, of the United States. And um, yeah, you know, just like in terms of it, it, it was a point of no return uh, in terms of, I think, of how the, you know, African Americans uh, um, saw their role in the country. Um, I think it's the day that people stopped using the word Negro and started using the word black. And, uh, uh, but that's just, you know, that that's a, almost a, a superficial consideration compared to uh, deeper uh, changes that were happening at the time. Um, Anyway, I'm just thinking out wow. loud. If you, wanted, if you wanted to know what I'm thinking about, you know, Chiron relative to the eclipse, that's that's what I think. Whatever. whatever so uh, a a Chironic solar eclipse, like a particularly, um, yeah, yeah, the the eclipsing of a of a leader who, um, uh, you know, is like especially sort of needed and and. Uh, painful to lose um yeah. yeah well that's the thing um you know the uh yeah it's 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 kind of it's it's a period where we 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 cross a bridge and um we're no longer in the world we were living in the day before you know um that that's what i think Chiron does, if I can, if that makes any sense. And the other thing, I mean, ironically, not, not to pivot into a weird space, but the other thing that makes me think of Chiron, apart from the murder of human rights activists, um, is something we've talked about. For, I think something that interests you probably more than it does me, uh, but it's the, the whole, um, uh, you know, extraterrestrial life question, the, the you know, be they, um, you know, unidentified flying objects or, or, you know, things of that nature. Um, something else that happened the same week that Martin Luther King was murdered was uh, Stanley Kubrick's uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey came out. Let me open this. Um, where is it? Where is it? There we are. It premiered in Washington, D.C. on April 2nd, just two days before uh, King was murdered. And when Chiron was later discovered in November of 1977, that was the same month that Close Encounters of the Third Kind came out. Um, I think that, you know, speak, talk about a bridge that you're crossing. I mean, I don't know what's going on with any of this. You know, you know me, I'm kind of, uh, well, we've talked about this before on the live stream. You I mean, I, that's, you that's I wild. Seen, I you mean, I've seen things. Yeah. As far as uh, well, I mean, as far as like literally just what's happening in the news right now, I mean, the, there are there's this group of lawmakers who have been briefed on uh, some of the claims that David Grush has made, and all mm -hmm. of the indications given, um, you know, from those meetings is that uh, you know he was not discredited. Uh, he that his his claims have merit and he made some pretty extraordinary claims uh in that uh uh july i believe he, he that was when he appeared in front of um that uh congressional uh delegation where he he made these claims about uh, uh that the united states has a crash retrieval program uh and that the origin of these crafts are unknown and that we even have the bodies of the pilots that those that were using these craft and that they're, they're not human. Um, and <laughs> so these are some pretty, you know, well, you know, uh, this, to, to, to tie a neat little ribbon on all of this. Um, wouldn't it be awesome if they were about to burn these red cows and a flying saucer lands and aliens jump out and say, don't do it. <laughs> Well, you know, I think that's pretty much like the only thing that could possibly, uh, yeah. you know, save the world at this point is uh, just, you know, if aliens decide to go, you know what, you know, we're just going to, you yeah. know, we're going to stop with the time to talk. Time, time, to have a little you know, time, time to actually talk. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm I I am kind of interested to see what happens when, you know, we get to the Uranus return of the Roswell event. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that will be while Uranus is in Gemini yeah. and uh you know, there's, there's even, there was a, there's been some talk and some chatter from retired generals talking about how 
the U.S. is currently in possession of technology that, you know, would allow you to get around the planet in, you know, a matter of hours, you know, basically massive leaps forward have been made in transportation, which apparently might have been derived from some of the technologies that have been uh, retrieved from these uh, these craft. And uh, that I've been kind of wondering what Uranus and Gemini would mean just from the perspective of the fact that it's in Gemini. Um, you know, we already have a fairly, <laughs> we've already had a lot of technological advancements that relate to communications. You know, uh, Uranus hasn't been in Gemini during the time where we've had like smartphones or, you know, where texting became a bigger thing and where email has become a thing. And so I wondered, well, how would, how would communications or movement through the air, how could that possibly get any more futuristic or advanced with Uranus going through Gemini? And <laughs> I think the answer would be, um, uh, you know, some truly novel um, kind of uh, breakthrough in, in physics that allows us to, uh, you know, travel in uh, crafts that, uh, I guess, <laughs> have their origin in this kind of alien technology. Uh, right. So... I guess we'll see. <laughs> this will be my Uranus opposition. I was born with Uranus at twenty three Sag, um, so when I'm forty two, I guess we'll we'll get some answers. Roughly forty two. Well, I I think I think uh, frankly, I'm glad someone brought up Chiron. I usually don't, you know, I don't talk much about Chiron, but I'm glad someone brought it up. Uh, whoever did, thank you. Um, I'm inclined to think that, yeah, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to find anything out this month is probably going to be it, that um, to some degree, the speculation ends and, and we get some kind of answer uh, during this, you know, and that's, that's the, the, the light amidst all this darkness that we've been covering today is um, whatever the heck this, this thing is, you know, whatever we've been seeing, uh, you know, other people and you and I, um, that that we get some kind of answer uh, or we get closer to one yeah i mean and i kind of wonder if maybe maybe we really don't know like what if the government just doesn't really know much more than the average person does you know uh if these things are just uh, phasing into existence here um you know if they're not even coming from another place you know if they're just or from like outer space if they're just kind of teleporting here more or less like um, it seems whatever they've been, they've probably been here a long time and, you know, at least don't seem to actively wish us harm, but, uh, yeah, it would be nice to know what's actually going on. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Wow. Um, oh, uh, Astro Brain Thoughts, uh, says one thing, David, what, uh, one thing David, his claims do point out without question is that a huge amount of American tax dollars are used for technology and scientific information that is not disclosed and should be open sourced. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. part of the reason he came forward is he said, well, you know, the rules are being broken here because Congress has no oversight over the allocation of the, these monies. And um, so uh, <laughs> who's really so I think it's interesting for the United States, really, because it kind of brings up the question of who's actually in control here. You know, do, do do we have civilian oversight of the military, or do they, or do we just have a de facto military industrial complex that is the actual authority? Um, you know, if we if we don't have a way of being able to uh, control how you know public money is spent on this research, then it's kind of you know <laughs> that's it kind of brings up questions of like, um. Yeah, who's in who's actually in power, and you know, do we actually have a democracy then? Um, so the, there's some, you know, aside from the kind of otherworldly aspects of this, there is this kind of more nuts and bolts issue of just like, <laughs> you know, where's people's money going, and yeah. um, and also uh, who's in charge? You know, right. I mean, who's, again, who's you know, in who's in charge? Like, uh, you know, I know it's it's like this. Uh, this this phrase that we've all come to loathe, deep state, right? I, <laughs> and and you know, there's I mean, talk about paranoia and, and everything, but you know, there is there there are fa facets of the U.S. government that um, 
are are not watched over by by the people or by Congress or by anyone that sort of act of their own accord. Uh, we might have different ideas of what they do and what they're up to and who they work for. And, and you know, I'm right. not going to claim to know any of this stuff, uh, but it does, you know, and, and that's why I, I mentioned the Kennedy assassination earlier, because um, that was, you know, when when you started to see the potential of um, some kind of some kind of machine within the U.S. government. Uh, uh, or hiding within the U.S. government that that was acting of its own accord. Yeah, people use these terms like deep state and and shadow government. Yeah. I mean, all right. these things are is um, contingency plans. I mean, it's uh, it's right. the gov- you know it's the government asking the question, what do we do if everything gets wiped out? Who's in charge if you know, say, a nuclear bomb is dropped on Washington D.C. and wipes out the entire chain of command, and there's no there's no, you know, government. how do we continue, you know, in the event that something drastic like that happens? And I think that that's, that's, <laughs> and so the systems and processes that have been built up to answer that question of what happens if everything goes to shit, that is, that is in effect, it's just, it's just the backup plan. You know, it's, that's well, what yeah. the, I mean, the, you know, um, uh, China government really is. Yeah. Um, you know, when when you had the murder of John F. Kennedy and the the uh, the Warren Commission, which was run by Alan Dulles, who had been fired by Kennedy from being the head of the CIA, uh, when that happened, it just you know, reasonable people uh, um, had every reason to think that um, someone who wasn't elected had decided that John F. Kennedy should no longer be president of the United States. And took it upon themselves to uh, do something about it. Um, so that's I'm I'm talking about that. That's not a contingency plan, right? That's, yeah, that's someone deciding undemocratically, uh, you know, who should be president and who shouldn't, and uh, and uh, acting on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, that's true, and. I think um, uh, yeah, that's uh, I, I kind of have a feeling that a lot of this probably came about from the Saturn Pluto conjunction in Leo after yeah. the after World War II. Is this when you really saw the establishment of like the national security state kind of writ large? That was the yeah yeah you know um, the, I mean there are so many government organizations that kind of came about from that uh, conjunction um, we saw this all that happened with the Saturn Pluto opposition as well. Uh, in 2001, after the 9 11 attacks, you had you know the Department of Homeland Security and this massive expansion of surveillance, the Patriot Act. Um, right. All of those things have had repercussions. So all of these successive Saturn Pluto kind of alignments have been all about expanding the or empowering you know, the kind of Saturnian infrastructure of, of, of government. And there's a degree to which these things can sort of be justified in the moment. But oftentimes you look back and, and you know, we just see that what these what these developments have meant is the erosion of civil liberties and, um, and of privacy. And... Uh, <laughs> well, you know, uh, coming back full circle to that, um, I can name you three freshman congressmen who were elected in November of 1946 at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction when it was within about five degrees of conjunction. Mm-hmm. Um, Joseph McCarthy, who would later become a senator. Uh, Richard Nixon, who would later <laughs> become a senator and later become vice president and later become president. And yeah. John F. Kennedy, who would later become a senator and later become a president. All three of those guys first elected at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 1946. Wow. Um, yeah that's that's you know that's that's the interesting election to me it's a it was a you know a by-election during the red two venus retrograde and yeah uh those three guys all of whom had their own sort of mark to make on the country in the coming decades uh uh, first came to uh, office at that time wasn't nato established at that time as well Yep. Well, NATO is no, no, maybe, yeah, that, yeah, NATO is so, April yeah. of nineteen or March of March, April of nineteen forty nine. Sun and Aries, uh, somewhere around there. Um, it's a little bit later. Okay. Um, 
was it the CIA then that was established? CIA is 1947. CIA is Saturn. okay. Okay, CIA that was is, one of the. That yeah, was true. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, NATO, <sighs> NATO was a little bit later, just before the Soviet Union got mm -hmm. the bomb. Right at the tail end of Uranus and Gemini. Uranus USA. The last page of Uranus USA is the the formation of NATO. Yeah, uh, yeah. We yeah, we'd love to uh, see that book, Nick. If we could ever get a second edition published that'd be really nice people would yeah, love to read yeah. it I, I i i do pluck away at it i you know it's 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 part of the part of the plan you should just do a special reissue of the first edition you know no. <laughs> <laughs> come on no. uh, <laughs> um because i've lost my copy i have no i can't yeah, find I, it I, anywhere some people have and and you know i'm i'm sorry about that but <laughs> <nope>. <laughs> Cool. But frankly, I think the, the only copy I have is like like my parents have a copy. You know, I have a PDF. I mean, I guess. Oh, you know, yeah. But um, you could yeah, sell I that. I, well, I I do, I do. Oh, People, you do sell it? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you okay because I was hoping uh, yeah to get a copy of that again. Okay, um, well, well, I, I'll, I'll look that. for that. All right. Well, if it's in if it's in your on your website for sale, I'll totally buy it. Um. Um, yeah, I don't think it's on my website. I think, I think we were selling it on Chris's website uh, at some. Oh, point. it's on Chris's website. I think okay. so. Yeah, we were at some point. Anyway, some people have gotten it. All right. So, what else have people been saying as we wind down? South Node helps us let go, Patrick. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the South Node is like that's where the Moon's path goes south of the sun, which is interesting if, uh, I mean, cause I've kind of been trying to untangle the symbolism of what that means. I would think that, you know, the moon going on the South node would be a better thing for the sun and less good for the moon because the moon's on the Southern trajectory, but past that point, the sun will be, will have, will be higher in latitude than the moon. Whereas when the moon goes North of the sun, in a way, you could say that's a bad thing for the sun because the moon will be above the sun's position, you know, in latitude. So in a way, you could say that like a south node eclipse event is like better for the people because the leader is like the the needs of the, the collective, the moon, are like being literally placed above the sun, the leaders, whereas a... Um, Whereas a, whereas a South Node event uh, is maybe like better for the sun because it's higher than me. So it's like the will of the leaders is, uh, is sort of prioritized above the will of the collective or the people. Um, and I, I, I that's mean, I, one I, way I, to I think about it. Yeah, I get, I get your reasoning. And I think there's something to that. But more plainly spoken, I think of the North Node being very deliberate and conscious and the South Node being uh sort of you know a uh, non sort of reactive or responsive and unconscious like you, you know that whole tail uh, head and tail of the dragon thing i think is a really useful metaphor the north node being the head it's sort of it's aware of what it's doing it has a plan it's got a a direction and it's proactive Whereas the, the south node being the tail of the dragon, yeah, the plastic bag in the wind. Thank you, Practical Astros. The just, you know, like an animal's tail, it's just, it's a response. Um, the analogy I use sometimes, and it's kind of a gruesome one, uh, but when it comes to murder, you know, the, the, the a north node will commit a pre-planned murder for personal gain, whereas the south node just sort of snaps and grabs a weapon and kills the first person close by there's no rhyme or reason to it it's just a just a a, a thing uh not necessarily accidental but not deliberate or, or conscious or not planned uh whereas the north node knows exactly what it's doing and it's doing it for a reason i'm just reading the comments so there's a very interesting explanation nick um people are discussing whether or not chickens or bullets win uh, <laughs> I don't know that's oh, like uh, whether 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 it's easier to survive like by having chickens or whether it's more important to to live, you know, by having weapons. Um, 
I'd say I, my vote's for chickens. I mean, you know, you can always trade with someone who has a gun. A person who has a gun needs to eat as well. If you have nothing else, if you, you have a chicken, you can't. Yeah, you can't eat lead. Um, <laughs> so uh, I would say chickens wins ultimately. Well, it gives you way. Yeah, to I mean, you know, here here in South Africa, you 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 keep chickens to attract mongoose. Uh, because mongoose kill snakes and you, you know, it's not legal to go and kill snakes, but if you want to clear your property of snakes, you bring chickens onto your property and then the mongoose come along uh, wanting to eat the chickens. And then they sort of kill the snakes because mongoose <laughs> just, you know, they're, they're big snake killers. So that's, that's, you know, that's how I think about the whole survival thing. But what happened, but Chris is what happens if the chicken has a gun. Yeah. I, yeah, I, knew, I, mean... I knew, I knew someone was going to say that. And of course it's Chris Brennan. Um, if you if you try to take the egg yeah they'll kill you so yeah that's a problem um that's true look, I, I, I can tell you you know um <laughs> two two days from now um ayanda is turning 13 and uh, oh congratulations by the way thank you thank you and she's obsessed with chickens um her birthday cake a few years ago was literally a chicken birthday cake um and and you know the, the the kids were all asked to bring chicken themed presents and and you know the mothers were bringing the kids to the birthday party and they were like oh the birthday cake is like a chicken this really is a a chicken birthday party um so yeah um we, i already live in a very chicken obsessed household so i think As definitely I. I did, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah in this in this household it would be chickens <laughs> yeah this is a this is a household chicken we don't we don't do weapons yeah um uh so yeah but what happens if the chicken has a gun yeah i guess you gotta make them go through the federal background check they won't have a pass you know chickens are up to all kinds of stuff um <laughs> uh well we're not gonna all right so dlm says chickens aren't food leave chickens alone and eat lentils yeah, no we, we have well, a pet we, chicken no, no no you eat you eat the eggs not the chicken That's right. you need the That's chicken right. for the eggs right. um but uh what was I going to say? Oh, oh, I was going to go back to Stephanie King's comment here. Uh, she says, also, Patrick, back to your Uranus as a malefic, uh, but in hindsight, a benefic. I would extend that same liberty to Chiron. Um, I I don't know enough about Chiron, really, to, to be able to say for sure one way or the other. But I do have the opposite view for Neptune, where I think Neptune is like a benefic in the moment, but a malefic later. Um, because... Neptune is like getting swept up in the moment and going along with something just because everyone else is. And then later on, you look back and you go, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> you know, um, that's, that's why I look at the Neptune in, in kind of the opposite way. Like Uranus is like malefic now, benefic later. Neptune is benefic now, malefic later. Um, but you know, there, there's all the kinds of different shades uh, to that. Yeah, I, I I don't think of either of them being deliberately malefic or benefic. Um, that's, I'm talking about the, the subjective experience of them. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I I you know, strictly speaking, I think that's in the realm of of Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn. That's it. Those are the only planets that can be specifically benefic or malefic, which isn't the same thing as benevolent and malevolent, which I think some people sometimes confuse. Uh, um, the, the that terminology. Uh, a planet can be malefic but benevolent in its outcome, uh, and vice versa. Um, but that's that's another conversation for another time. Right. Um, uh, interesting comments. <laughs> uh lentils feed the chicken some more eggs <laughs> and also, <laughs> interesting uh debate J jf um, just called you chris by the way um <laughs> hitting that oh thumb yeah jane hit my, i'm patrick it's yeah, i patrick. even have my i even have my my, my uh twitter handle down here you should i, I imagine okay. that's we a, can be we can be interchanged with with chris a small uh, era <laughs> um uh I mean, we'd all love to be Chris, you know, but uh, there's only one, only one of him. There's only one Chris Brennan, and God love him. We love him. Um, who are you, Watson? I am Patrick Watson, and my website is patrickwatsonastrology.com. Um, but right now, you actually can't book me at all right now for anything. So you'll have to see Nick. <laughs>
Sure, but you're you're you know you will be you will be on the. I will be back. Yeah, yeah, at some point. Back, yeah, at so, some point so, in, the, in a few months. You know, if you if you really can't stand me and you must have a reading with Patrick, <laughs> you'll just have to wait probably a few months, uh, but not longer than that. Uh, in the meantime, yes, I'm I'm still available. Nick Dagan Best Astrologer dot com uh, for all your astrology needs. Uh, I'm not here to siphon off uh, um, Patrick's clientele. Uh, he's he's. <laughs> You know, um, yeah, he's got his reasons for taking a, a little pause right now, and I definitely respect that. But uh, if 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 you really can't stand me, by all means, just just wait a while, and he'll be back on the market in no time. Um, all right, uh, Patrick, the podcast prince. Yeah, thank you, Patrick. Um, <laughs> this this was a rough one, uh, admittedly. Um, Number one, I, I, I make no bones about the fact that even though I'm I'm generally pretty well versed in in history and the history of the world with astrology, um, the Middle East I've always sort of, I mean I, I've done some work on it, but it, it's always been a frustrating thing for me to try to follow. Um, but I respect that right now. Yeah, you know, I mean this this when you mentioned the red heifer ankle again before Dan's video was posted, when you proposed that for an episode for this, um, for the, you know proposed that as a topic for this episode, I, I I thought yeah okay this is worth covering even even if it does get a little ugly, um, you know it, it was worth talking about. So thank you for bringing it up. Um, I, I hope I I I was a worthy co-star on, oh, on this yeah. discussion no, as always um, as always and um yeah you know uh thank you everyone for for participating and uh um for for you know all the all the comments all the helpful comments all the funny comments and uh we 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 love you all of course we do have our patreon uh, uh account oh look at that the power just came back on here <laughs> um right as we're That's wrapping cool. up so that's what happens after an eclipse. The sun comes back. There's a new well, sun. There you are. Oh, yeah. You know that? How funny, right? We do an eclipse episode and then I wind up being in the. <laughs> Eclipsed. <laughs> yeah. WTF, man. Like, Hopefully, that's even... not an omen for you, Nick. Was... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, continue. Yeah. Um... Um, how funny is that? That's so funny that the. You're right. I was. I... <laughs> it was kind of like a. Um... A, a theme here, you know. I, I didn't do it deliberately, but uh, I my my room was eclipsed for a little while. Um, okay, so yes, um, patreoncom slash the astrology live stream. Um, we've got three different tiers. The top tier is the Cosmo tier, the Cosmos tier, where um, amongst other things, first of all, you're 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 giving us the the maximum support we ask for, and in return, uh, we do two private live streams a month. Uh, on the second Saturday, we we do a, a just a private one for patrons where we talk about certain subjects and and uh, yeah, we get a little deeper, and sometimes we cover stuff that we wouldn't dare cover on the live stream. Although <laughs> today was uh, um, obviously you know uh, a new frontier. Um, and then we also, of course, do the movie nights. We had a great movie night last night. We do it on the last Saturday of the month. Uh, fourth we Saturday. Watch the fourth Saturday. Thank you. That's right, because there's five Saturdays. This Sometimes month. there's five. Yeah, yeah. There's, so we there's just five Saturdays, but we always do it the fourth Saturday, which is why we did it last night. And uh, it's really great fun. We start with a watch party. We watch a movie and and we watch the movie together. And and you know comment in in the chat while we're watching the film and then afterwards we have a astrological discussion relating to the, the the movie or the star of the movie what have you. Last night we did Fist of Fury by Bruce Lee. Um, our patrons voted for that movie. Uh, we you know we proposed uh, five movies and uh, that got the most votes. So we watched that and then we talked about the the astrology and the life of Bruce Lee. So that was really fun. Um, Lots of other people will be covering uh, in that way on the movie nights, and you have to be a Cosmos tier um, patron supporter to participate in that. So, yeah, if you can, please do support us. Um, Patrick and I do want to develop this live stream, you know, into a <laughs> into a slicker operation where the lights aren't going out in the middle of the the broadcast and everything. Um, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd like to, you know, hire people to do thumbnails and edits and, and uh, yeah, get a little more sophisticated with our graphics and stuff. But uh, yeah, we need to sort of work up a budget in order to do that. So if you enjoy what we do, if you'd like to see us develop what we do, uh, please do consider supporting us. 
And uh, without further ado, thank you, Patrick, as always. The number one reason I love doing this is I just I get to talk to you. Um, and that's that's the honest truth. Um, I do. I do. You know, I, uh, it's just it's it's the best part of the week is, is that I get to <laughs> oh, talk thanks, thanks. Well, same as you. Same with same. For you thank too. you. Thank you. So thank you, everyone, for for participating tonight and or today, I guess, where you guys are. And um, we'll see you next week. See everyone. Peace.